Okay, let's continue on the normal distribution. I'm going to concentrate on the special application of the normal distribution. It's called a central limit theorem. So central limit theorem uh, tells us that for a population with any distribution, the distribution of the sample means approaches the normal distribution as the sample size increases. And this procedure in section forms the foundation for estimating the population parameters uh, and the hypothesis testings. Um, estimating population parameter that's from chapter seven. We'll concentrate on that hypothesis testing. It's on chapter 8. So central limit theorem provides foundation for chapter 7 and chapter 8. So central limit theorem itself, the given condition is the random variable x has a distribution with a mean mu and standard deviation of sigma. Okay. And the simple random sample of all size n are selected on the population. This, the samples are selected in such that all possible samples of sample same size n have the same chance of being selected. That's basically the definition of the simple random simple random samples. <clears throat> and those two are given condition. And the conclusion is the distributions of the sample means when you pick the sample, each sample will yield a sample mean. Use x bar to represent the sample mean. The distribution of the sample means of all the sample means, you can have a lot of sample means. As the sample size increases, approaches the normal distribution. And the mean of all the sample means we use mean of all the sample means, population mean, mu, with all the sample means. It's the same thing as the actual population mean, mu. And the standard deviation of this of the sample means. Using sigma of all the sample means equal population standard deviation over square root of sample size. So those two are the most important discovery from the central limit theorem. And the practical rules in order to use in order to use the central limit theorem, either one of these conditions must be satisfied. You see LT to represent the central limit theorem. If the sample size larger than 30, the distribution of the sample means could be approximately reasonably well by a normal distribution. So when the sample size greater than 30, we can use central limit theorem. And as the sample size becomes larger, the approximation becomes much better, which is closer to the normal distribution. Sample size gets larger. The better it is. Okay, if the original population is normally distributed, then the sample will inherit that particular trait from the population, the sample becomes normally distributed. And for any sample size n, the sample means will be normally distributed. Okay. So either one of these satisfied, then we can use a central limit theorem. So the mean of the sample means becomes population mean mu. The standard deviation of the sample means 
equal to population standard deviations divided by the square root of sample size. And we also call this standard error. Standard deviation is same term as standard error. And this is how the when the sample gets larger, how the distribution of the population look like. Okay, so we process from sample size equal to one all the way to fifty. As you can see, um, the distribution here look like this for the first. So fairly flat. When the sample size becomes ten, then it becomes slightly better. And when the sample size becomes 50, we get a much better, you know, much better approximation. We get a better shape of the normal, normal curve or bell curve. So the sample, the better, the bigger the sample size, the better the approximation is. So as the sample size increases, the sampling distribution of the sample means approaches normal distribution. So picking a sample from the population, picking the samples from the population is called a sampling distribution. This process is called a Sampling distribution. If you want to use a combination to represent this process, sample size we know is small, lowercase n. Population size is uppercase n. So basically, this process is a combination we do. Capital letter N. C R. Okay. So we get this. This determine how many samples we can generate from the population in the size N. And let's take a look at example. And before we move on to that, so <coughs> central limit theorem. So the z-score equal to sample mean minus population mean mu over standard deviation with sigma over square root m. This is the most important thing. To summarize what the central limit theorem is, basically that's what it is. Now let's take a look at the example about the elevators. Suppose an elevator has a maximum capacity of 16 passengers with a total weight of 2,500 pounds. That means, on average, each passenger should not should be twenty five hundred pounds dividing by sixteen. We get an average weight for those sixteen men. So be twenty five hundred by sixteen. Then put into the calculator, get the result 156.25 pounds per person. Assuming worst, worst case scenario in which the passenger are all male, um, what are the chances the elevator is overloaded? So if the total weight is above 2500 pounds. And it's overweight. overweight. So assuming male weights follow normal distribution with population mean mu, are given population mean mu equal 
82.9. We also know the population standard deviation, 40.8. Find the probability that one randomly selected male has a weight greater than 156.25. So since you only pick one male, so we use a regular z-score formula to find out the probability here. And right here for part B, you have a sample of 16 males. To do that, you have a sampling distribution. Now we use a formula for the central limit theorem. So z score equal to population sample mean and population mean mu over population standard deviation over square root of sample size. Okay. So if you look at this, if a sample of 16 males have a mean weight of greater than 156.25 pounds, which puts the total weight at 25,000 pounds exceeding the maximum capacity so which create risk for those passengers I find the probability that one random is like the male has a weight greater than 156.25 so you draw the bell curve and you're looking for the area to right because greater than keyword so looking for area to right to the right Draw the bell curve, we realize this, we're looking for the area to the right right here. Now again, find the z-score first. x equal to 6.25 equals here. And then mu is 182.9. Find the difference over the population standard deviation, 40.8. You get a z-score, which is negative point. 65 approximately equal to okay now you go to the table a2 so we go to the table a2 here look for negative point zero 0.65 then go back to the first page then you use negative 0.6 and 5 they have intercept intercept turned out to be 0 0.2578 0 0.2578 that's the intercept and that's what we're looking for okay now you go back 0 0.2578 This is 0 0.2578. Area to left is 0 0.2578. But we want area to right. So this is equal to 1 minus 0 0.2578. Then we get 0 0.7422. Which means we get a 74.22% of chance with probability if you pick one if you pick one randomly select a male his weight will be greater than 156.25 now find the probability of a sample of 16 males have an average weight greater than 156.25 since the distribution of a male since the population is normally distributed right it says here Since the population is normally distributed, so the sam sample inherit the population property, so sample means are di normally distributed. Population is normally distributed, so the sample inherited the property from the population, so the sample means are normally distributed.
then we're going to apply the central, central limit theorem here. So the essence of the central limit theorem is this going equal to sample mean minus population mean mu over population standard deviation over the square of sample size. So the mean of all the sample means equal to population mean, 182.9. And then standard deviation of all the sample means equal population standard deviation over the square root sample size. So it's 40.8 over square root of 16. Square root of 16 equal to 4. So this is 40.8 by 4, 10.2. Okay, now you apply the central limit theorem here, then plug in the sample mean. Yep, so sample mean minus population mean over square root of over the standard deviation for the sample means we get a z score of negative two point six one. And again if you go back to the table A2 negative two point six one the probability negative two point six one we turn out to be 0 0.0045. So that's area to the left. We get it. Negative 2.61, 0 0.0045. Now let's go back to the question. That means area on, the, on this side is 0 0.0045. So the area on the right will be 0 0.9955. That means the probability for this probability for average weight greater than one hundred fifty six point twenty five equal to one minus point zero zero forty five nine nine five five. That means this chance is a lot higher, which is almost like one hundred percent. So while that is a point seven four. 32 probability that any given male will weigh great more than 156.25 pounds. There's a 0.9955 probability that with a sample of 16 males of an average weight of 156.25 pounds or greater. So if elevators fail to capacity with all males, there's a very good chance this safe weight capacity of 2500 pounds will be exceeded. Which is not, which is very risky. So you should definitely avoid that. So now, another example given the population of man has normally distributed weight with a mean of 172 pounds, standard deviation of 29 pounds. If one man is randomly selected, so that means we do not have central limit theorem. Apply here means 172, and this this weight is greater than 167 pounds. Given x value, you put 167. So now this is on the left. So 167, and we're looking for the area greater than meaning area to the right. Again, first of all, we find the z score. Using x minus mu over sigma, 167 minus 172 over 29, using negative 5 over 29. Let's see what that is. 5 over 20. This is negative 0.17, approximately. Now, again, go back to the table E2, look for the area to the left. So again, first page of the table A2, neg negative 0.17, we get a probability of 0.4325. Okay. So that's area to the left. If you go back, area to the left is 0.4325.
4325. And we are looking for the average to the right. So probability for x greater than 167 pound equal to 1 minus 4325, which is 0 0.5675. That means probability here will be 56.75%. Now, probably if given population, man has normally distributed with a mean, still population mean will be 172. Standard deviation is 29. So now we have 12 different men are normally distributed. Now different men are randomly selected. So we get a sample mean. We compare the sample mean to population mean. So this is what we call a sampling distribution. We are comparing the sample mean to the population mean. Okay, to the bell curve. Population mean mu is 172. Sample mean 167. Greater than that. So again, we're looking for the area to the right. Now, using the central limit theorem, we have sample size which is 12. Their sample mean is 167. This is average weight, mean weight. So, using central limit theorem, find a z score x bar minus mu over population standard deviation over square root of sample size 167 minus 172 okay dividing by 29 over radical of 12 then we're going to get a much smaller z-score And so now to be point negative point six zero. Okay. Now again you go to the center of the table A2, look for the probability. Point six zero, it's right here. Point two seven forty three. So that's associate probability. 0.2743 Area to the left is 0.2743 For the area to the right So probability from sample mean greater than 167 pound equal to 1 minus 0.2743 which is 0.7257 so this probability is a lot higher meaning we have a much better chance for 12 different men the average weight is greater than 167 pounds have much higher chance